Welcome to From His Heart with Pastor Jeff Shreve. This month, we're learning how to have a life that truly matters by living on purpose. And today, we're going to discover what a sold-out Christian life really looks like. It's a lesson that will help you see if you are really all in. have your Bible, please turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, we're in a series called Living on Purpose, and today I want to speak to you about being all in. Paul says this in Romans 12 verse 1, I urge you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. A young lady was at a conference, Christian conference, and she was very distraught and she was very tearful, and she came up to the conference speaker at a break, and she said, I, I'm just so frustrated. I'm so discouraged. I'm so defeated in my Christian life. She said, it seems no matter how hard I try, I just can't seem to do it. I just can't seem to walk in victory. I just can't seem to be obedient to the Lord. And she described her Christian experience as just a, a roller coaster kind of, of relationship with the Lord. And sometimes there were high highs, but then there would be these low lows. And sometimes she just seemed like it was, she just wanted to serve the Lord so much. And other times she was just so cool to the Lord. And she was sick and tired of being like that. And she said to this conference speaker, she said, is there anything you can do to help me? And he said to her, he said, well, what have you been doing to try and help yourself? And she said, well, I, I've tried everything. I've gone to every meeting. I've gone to every healing service and just thinking, what is it? Maybe there's just something I'm missing that'll, that'll break me out of this uh, malaise that I'm in in my spiritual life. And then she said this that was very telling. She said, I've tried to get all I can get out of God. And that conference speaker said to her, that's your problem. He said, the key to victory is not getting all you can, but giving all you've got. It's not trying to get all you can out of God. It's giving all you've got to the Lord. It's being all in. Are you all in? There was a man that was born in 1855. His name was Judson Van Deventer. He was a, a believer. He was very gifted. He was a really good artist. He had lots of gifts and talents. And he was a guy who was struggling with the will of God versus his own will. And, and there were things that he wanted to do and things that God wanted him to do, and there was a battle inside. And he wrote this hymn in the late 1800s. It says, All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust, in, trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Now, I want to ask you a question. I want you to be really honest. Now, we're not going to go around with a microphone. I just want you to be honest in your heart. Can you sing that song and really mean it. And are you really surrendered to Jesus? Let me share with you three encouragements that I believe will help you as they've helped me as I wrestle with this on a daily basis, as every Christian does, surrendering all to the Lord. Encouragement number one, it is reasonable 
sur to surrender all to Jesus. It is reasonable and it is right and it makes complete and total sense. Look at Romans 12.1 in the Amplified. It says this, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, and beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Did you notice how the Amplified uh, defines that? Which is your reasonable, rational, and intelligent service. Sometimes we have people that they'll say about Christianity, you know, if you become a Christian, let me tell you what you need to do. you got to check your brains at the door to become a Christian because it's all about faith and you can't really understand things because, the, you, you know, you can't make heads or tails out of the Bible. And, boy, if you believe the Bible, then that mean, means you believe that, that Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And you believe that God spoke it all into existence. And so, uh, you know, the, the supposed intellectuals look at us like we're idiots if you believe the Scripture. So they say, you know, to become a Christian, you just got to check your brains at the door. And you just got to say, well, I believe even though I, I, I know better in my mind. and That's not true. You don't have to check your brains at the door to believe God and to believe his word. Hey, if you're going to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, if you're going to become a follower of his, if you're going to be sold out for Jesus, that is reasonable, and that is rational, and that is logical, and that is intelligent. Let me tell you what's stupid. What's stupid is to reject God. That is the most stupid thing that a person could do. That is the most foolish thing a person could do. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's a foolish thing to reject God and to not acknowledge God as Lord of all. So, it is reasonable to surrender to Jesus. Let me tell you why. Two reasons. Number one, because He is Almighty God. That's why. When it says in verse 1, I urge you therefore, brethren. You always want it, when you see a therefore, you always want to say, what is the therefore, therefore? And therefore refers to what he just said. And let's look in Romans 11 to see what he just said, beginning in verse 33. He says this, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unfathomable, unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. God is almighty. He is creator. He is sustainer. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is everything, for from him and through him and to him are all things. He is God. We lose sight of that today. So many churches, they, they, they shrink God down to where God just becomes some kind of uh, celestial therapist. God's just kind of a rah-rah a boy. He's some, some kind of heavenly shoeshine boy, heavenly delivery man. He's just there. You know, we get the feeling that God is kind of like a genie in a bottle, and when he comes up out of the bottle, he comes up and he says, yes, master. Like somehow we're his master. Uh, we're not his master. He's the master. He's the God of all mercies. He's not the God at our mercy. He is God. Why do we uh, surrender to him? Why is that reasonable and logical and intelligent? Because of who he is, because he is God, almighty God. But secondly, because not only is he almighty God, he is all merciful God. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, the, the kindness and the love and the compassion and the pity and, and that, that loving kindness of God, 
to come before him, to surrender yourself, to offer yourself as a living sacrifice. God is a merciful God. In the Old Testament, when the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines, they thought they had won a huge victory when they, they got the Ark of the Covenant, that, that box that, that represented the presence of God. They stuck it in their little temple where they had Dagon, the fish god. They worshipped, the Philistines worshipped the fish god. He was ha- half uh, the torso of a fish and then the, the body of a, of a man, uh, the bottom of a fish, the, the body of a man. And they put that box inside this temple and they said, look, our god, god Dagon, has defeated Yahweh. Well, they came in the next morning, and Dagon's on his face before the Lord. So they like, Dagon, hey, this isn't good for morale. And then they propped him back up, quit falling down. And the next day they came, and he's all broken before the Lord. And so they said, man, this, is, this box has some power to it. And then all of a sudden God gave them tumors that had the, the, the people that had his Ark of the Covenant. Tumor, tumors, terrible tumors. Actually, what the Scripture says is he gave them hemorrhoids. Uh, you don't think God has a sense of humor. God has a sense of humor. He's like, yeah, I'll give you all a pain. And uh, so they started sharing the box with uh, the other cities of Philistia. And every, every city it went to, they got hemorrhoids. And then they finally said, let's get this thing out of here. And they sent the box, the Ark of the Covenant, back to Israel. And it came to a place, place called Beth Shemesh. And the, the Beth Shemathites, they wanted to look in the box to make sure that the uh, Philistines hadn't taken anything. And they looked in the box and bam, they died. And they said, after there was a great slaughter in Beth Shemesh, they said these words, Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? They were filled with fear. Man, you mess with God's box, boom. He isn't some celestial therapist. He isn't some big ball of mush. He isn't some kindly old grandfather. He is God. You mess with God, just as the old saying says, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. And they did something they shouldn't have done. Who is able to stand before the Lord, this holy God? Hey, Psalm 130 says this, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, oh, Lord, who could stand? But there's forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Hey, if you're going to live your life self-focused, you're going to be empty inside. But if you will live your life emptied of self so that the Lord can fill you, you're going to live life to the full. And the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him will go every place you go. Hey, what's the first encouragement about surrendering all to Jesus? The first encouragement is it's reasonable, it's rational, it's right. Only a fool would say no to that. But encouragement number two, we have to be honest here. And not only is it reasonable and rational and right, but it's a struggle to surrender all to the Lord. Anybody ever found that it's a struggle to surrender all to the Lord? Sure you did, even though you won't raise your hand. It's a struggle for you to raise your hand. Uh, it's It's a struggle. It is for me. It is for you. It is for Billy Graham. It is for everybody. Because just like in the Old Testament where Jacob wrestled all night with the angel of the Lord, he had an encounter with the pre-incarnate Christ too because he said, I saw God face to face and yet I live. It's a struggle. And we struggle and we fight and we say, oh, I just don't know if I want to really surrender all. I kind of like that song, I surrender most. And I keep some of these things back just for me. Some of these, some of these little, little pet sins and some of these little things that I like to do that the Lord might not be too excited about or too pleased about. I just keep those back for me. Lord, you got most of it. You got most of me. I surrender most. But see, that doesn't work. He's either Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. And he's not real crazy about the song, I surrender some or I surrender most. But he does know it's a struggle for us. And see, here the, here's why we struggle. We struggle because of pride. Because of pride. Pride makes it hard. Because it, within all of us is this desire that we have to put to death every day of calling our own shots, of being our own boss, of sitting in the driver's seat, of being captain of our own ship. The very first sin that was ever committed by a human being was the sin of being your own God. When 
the serpent told Eve, you eat of this fruit and you shall be like God, knowing good and evil. And see, when you're like God and you know good and evil, then you don't have to rely upon God. You don't have to depend upon God. You don't have to get your marching orders from God because you can be your own God. And she bought into that hook, line, and sinker, and so did Adam. Hey, this sounds like a good deal. God must be holding out on us. He doesn't want us to get in on the real good stuff. The devil always comes at us with that lie. God's holding out on you. I have the good stuff. What a lie. What a lie. Adam and Eve ate of the fruit. What did they find out? The serpent is a liar. God wasn't holding out on us. Now we've learned things. that We know things that we wish you we'd never learned. But the temptation is always there. Be your own God. It's the sin of pride. It's what was in Lucifer's heart where he says, I will uh, be the, like the most high. I'm going to set my throne above the most high. It's going to be all about me. Pride is a big, big struggle and a big barrier when it comes to breaking free and saying, I surrender all because of pride. God hates pride. It's the number one sin on God's hate list. There are six things, Proverbs 6 says, six things which the Lord hates, yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Number one, pride, a proud look, haughty eyes. God hates it. He hates it. Have you ever been to a funeral and they play the song, I did it my way? I was at a funeral once and they played the song, I did it my way. I just cringed. That's like saying this guy went to hell. He did it his way. You don't go to heaven doing it your way. Not my will, but thine be done. But pride, the Frank Sinatra song, it's the theme song of hell. I did it my way. You know who did it his way? Cain in Genesis chapter 4, where he came before the Lord his way with the fruit of, the, of his hands. With, he's a farmer, and he brought the fruit, fruit of the ground and the, the sweat from his brow. And God says, hey, if you're going to come before me, don't come before me with the fruit of the ground. You come before me with the blood of a lamb. But he says, no, I don't want to come that way, Lord. I'm going to come my way. And he did it his way, and God had no regard for his offering. Cain was full of pride, and when the Lord tried to reach him, Cain didn't even talk to God. He just went out and killed his brother Abel. Abel came God's way. Cain came his own way, and Cain couldn't stand it. And so he killed the one that came God's way. And the Bible's talking about Cain in the second to last book of the Bible, in the book of Jude, and it says this, Woe unto them, they've gone the way of Cain. The way of Cain is the way of pride. It's the way of woe. It's the song, I did it my way. Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus was totally surrendered. Jesus was all in. And so this this pride that we have that wants to control things, that wants to be in charge of things, that has to be put to death. And then the third encouragement, it is worth it to surrender all to Jesus. It's worth it. Man, when you really get to the place where you say, I willingly and I gladly offer myself, Lord, to you as a living sacrifice. Listen, it it happens once in time when you become a Christian, when you trust Christ with your life. But then it has to happen every single day where you offer yourself before the Lord and says, here I am, Lord. All of me. All of me. You know, I think so often about Matt, one of the first times that Matt was in our service when he first came here, and we were worshiping on a Sunday night. And I was standing next to him, and I had seen people as they'd worshiped, and I myself worshiped with my hands lifted up, but Matt didn't have his hands lifted up. Matt had his hands stretched out. It was like he was saying, here I am, Lord. All I am, Lord. I give all to you. I love that. And I think about that a lot as I worship. You know, there's a lot said about raising hands in the Bible, stretching out your hands in the Bible. And some people, they say, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't really want to do that. Two things that does. Number one, it shows that you're surrendered. It's a good thing because it shows that you're surrendered. And number two, it's what little kids do with their moms and dads and grandparents. They, They lift up their hands 
It says, pick me up. Pick me up. I surrender myself to you. I don't want to walk anymore on my own strength. Pick me up. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Hey, it is worth it to surrender all to the Lord. It's worth it because you'll please God if you do it. That was the ambition of Paul's heart, to please God. I remember when I was in high school, I was playing basketball in high school for the Cypress Creek Cougars in Houston. And my coach in high school, we were the first graduating class. We started in 10th grade, brand new school, Cypress Creek. And 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, we all had the same uh, coach because we didn't have upperclassmen. And Coach Norman Pache was my basketball coach. He was my basketball coach in 8th grade, and then he moved up. And I had to go to a different school in 9th grade because the way we, place where we lived, the, the Cypress Creek broke the, the, the boundary marker. So I had to go to Cy Fair for a year, but then I was able to go to Cypress Creek when they built the new school. And Coach Norman Pache was my coach. He is a dear, dear friend to this day. And I remember playing for Coach Pache. You know what? You know what I, I longed to, to experience as a player was the, the pleasure of my coach. The smile of my coach when I would do something good and he would pull me off to the side and said, man, you played great. You played great. I loved that. And that's it inside of every player. You want to please the coach. My favorite Movie character Rocky Balboa in Rocky II, before he goes to fight Apollo Creed, he tells his trainer, Mickey, he said, Mickey, I just want to tell you before we go out there that I'm going to be trying real hard for you tonight. Mickey smiled, patted him on the back. That, that's what's in the heart of, a, of an athlete. I want to please the coach. Well, my coach, my master is Jesus Christ. I want to please him. I want to be able to stand before him at the end of my life and hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. How's that going to happen? It only happens by surrender. Mm. So you please God if you do it. And you reveal God if you do it. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold but be transformed. The Greek word there is where we get our English word metamorphosis. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, that you may show forth what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable, which is the same well-pleasing and perfect. You know, if, if you will really surrender to the Lord, I mean really do it, spit on your pride, spit on your fear, and say, here I am, Lord, all I am, Lord, and Really give yourself away to the Lord and do it every single day. You will reveal God's will to those around you because you will begin to shine like the sun and the Lord will fill you with his life. And as John the Baptist said, you, as he said about the Lord Jesus, he must increase and I must decrease. And when that happens, boy, the Lord just takes over. You don't get more of Jesus. He gets more of you. And he just takes over more and more and more of you. And, and people start to recognize you as having been with Jesus. And they say, wow, there's something different about you. You're just transformed. You're just more and more like God. I love to be around you. Because being around you is like being around God. That's what the Lord wants to do in every one of his children comes through surrender. We've been talking about living on purpose. And you know, living on purpose begins when you surrender your life to Jesus. Have you ever done that? Do you know for certain you've opened your heart up to the Lord Jesus? If not, right now is the time for you to do so. Just pray with me, Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself but I believe that you are God in the flesh. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose again from the dead. And right now, Jesus, I open my heart to you. Forgive me, cleanse me, come into my life, be my Lord and Savior, change me from the inside out. I surrender all to you. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I'd love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, 
to know that God is using this program to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number, write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. You really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, All In, is from Pastor Jeff Shreve's series, Living on Purpose, and available in multiple formats when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. This month we're in this series called Living on Purpose. Why? Because many people don't do that. They don't see what God's purpose is for their lives and they don't live it out. They don't consider their future. Sure, it's easy to drift through life with no real focus. So many people do that, including many Christians, just drawing their breath, drawing their salary, all the while failing to see that their lives have eternal significance. I wanna help you see that a purposeless life is not the life God intends for you. Instead, He wants you to know the real joy that comes only by living every day in the light of eternity, in the light of Jesus Christ. Are you doing that? To help you live on purpose for the Lord, I'd like you to have a copy of my six message series, Living on Purpose. Now in it, you'll discover how to live your today in the light of your future and how to anticipate a glorious eternity. I hope you'll get your copy. Here's how. To get Pastor Jeff Shreve's six message series, Living on Purpose, and the complimentary booklet, The ABCs of the Christian Life, You can make your gift by calling 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. It's available in multiple formats. From His Heart is the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. You can find out more about that plan at fromhisheart.org. Real truth, real